Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem spiral matrix two. Yesterday's daily leak code problem was the first variation of this problem, which I solved on the main channel. And what's interesting about this problem is it's actually slightly easier than the first one in my opinion, because in this case we're given an N by N matrix, which is a square matrix, which I think is kind of interesting that this is the follow-up question. And you guys know that I always say that the order you solve problems in does matter. And this is unfortunately an example where I think leak code got the order wrong, but let's get into it. We're actually only given a positive integer N and we want to generate an N by N matrix where we fill the elements from one to N squared. It makes sense that we'd go up until N squared because that's how many uh, cells we're going to have in this grid if it's going to be n by n. But the trick here is that we want to fill them in spiral order, of course. So we do start at the top left. We're pretty used to doing that and we're pretty used to traversing to the right. So starting it out, we can fill in the first row pretty easily. One, two, three. But then we have to start going down four, five. And then we have to start going to the left, six, seven. And then from here, we have to start going up till eight. And then this has been pretty much one layer of the matrix. We have to continue spiraling though. And we do that by from this position, moving in to the grid. Now this was a three by three grid, but I'm sure you can imagine that much larger grids can exist. And our algorithm should work on any of them as long as they are square matrices. We will consider a four by four grid because I think that's about as big as we need to get to actually get the main idea here. So the first thing I want to say is that this problem is tricky, but it's not conceptually that complicated. We know what we're trying to do. It's just so many edge cases that we're going to have to deal with. And a lot of pointer manipulation, making sure that we like go like this. We go in, down, left, up, and we've done one spiral here. And at this point, we move inward. So this sort of becomes our sub problem. We had a four by four matrix initially, but then we did the outside stuff. And now we're left with just this inside two by two, which is another square matrix. So we can kind of break this problem up at a high level to just doing one spiral and then dealing with the sub problem. How exactly do we define this problem though? How do we know this is what we started out with and now now we have a sub problem. How do we represent that? Well, I like to do it with four pointers. There are other ways you can solve this problem, but I think conceptually this one makes the most sense to me and I don't have to think too much about the edge cases. What I mean is we can kind of define the current problem we're at by having a left boundary pointer, which tells us this is kind of our left boundary initially. We know that once we do the outer problem and we're left with the sub problem here, our left pointer should probably be over here to tell us that this is like a smaller matrix now. And initially our right pointer is going to do the same thing. It's going to tell us we're initially here. This is our right boundary. So that tells us we're dealing with like this part of the matrix, but we can go one step further and get like the vertical amount, which would tell us like what the top of our matrix is. Another pointer for that. I'm going to call it T or uh, top and another pointer at the bottom. Now you might be thinking since in this case, we are dealing with a square matrix left and right are always going to be the same as the top and the bottom, aren't they? Like as the left and right pointers move inward, as we get smaller sub matrices, won't the top and bottom pointers do pretty much the exact same thing? Yes, you're right. But I think being a little bit explicit and having a couple extra variables makes things a bit more readable. And for me, lets me kind of keep track of what I'm actually doing because it's really easy to get confused when you're dealing with like matrices and pointer manipulation. So if you're anything like me, I recommend having a couple extra variables to make your life a little bit easier. And also to actually name these pointers based on what they represent. A lot of people try to use pointers like I and J but I've done interviews where people get really confused with what their variables even mean halfway through like their coding solution. And if you become confused, it's hard for your interviewer to actually help you. 
So I try to keep things as simple as possible. But at this point, believe it or not, the problem isn't crazy hard. We know the first step is always going to be fill in the first row. Which row? Well, the top pointer is going to tell us which row we need to fill in. That's good. Now, how do we know which part we should start at and which part we should end at? Well, that's what we have the left and right pointers for, right? It's making our life pretty easy. We start with the value one and we just keep filling two, three, four. Now we are over here. So now we want to start going down. So what should we do? Well, our right pointer is going to tell us which column we should be in and our top pointer and bottom pointer will tell us what range we should go through, right? We should go from here to here to here to here. But if we do that, we're going to end up filling a five over here. So basically what I'm getting at is once we filled in the first row, we should probably take our top pointer over here and move it down by one. That's exactly what I'm going to do and move the top pointer here. So now we know to iterate from the top to the bottom pointer, filling in five, six, seven. Next, we know we want to fill in the bottom row, but the complicated part is we want to do it in reverse order. Now that's not super complicated, but it just means that we want to go from our right pointer all the way up until our left pointer. But once again, do not forget that we don't want to have to revisit this position twice. So before we actually start going through the bottom row, let's make sure we take our right pointer and decrement it. So I'm going to move the right pointer over here now. Now continuing to fill in the bottom row from right pointer to the left pointer. So I'm going to say 8, 9, 10. Now here we want to go from this position up this leftmost column. So we want to go from the bottom pointer to the top pointer, but of course not visiting this position twice. So before we start doing this, we're going to take the bottom pointer and decrement this one so that it's up here now. Now from here, we're going to fill in the values 11 and then 12. And this is the position where we would stop at. Now we have filled in one of the layers of the matrix. We've kind of solved that portion of the problem. Now we need to start doing this sub problem. So how do we do it? It's actually really, really simple. The way we set up this problem, I did this intentionally. All we have to do is take the left pointer and shift it to the right, because as you can see, we moved the right pointer, we moved the bottom pointer, and we moved the top pointer. The only one left for us to move is the left pointer. So we take this one and shift it to the left over here. Now we're dealing with this sub problem on the inside. And at this point, the algorithm just continues exactly as we did it. Because at this point, we don't even know what type of matrix we started out with. We don't care. We know we just have a two by two matrix and our pointers tell us everything else that we need to know. And also, of course, that we already filled in 12 values. So now we're going to be continuing at 13, 14, 15 and 16. Now, very quickly, I want to show you how the algorithm is going to terminate because that's important. That's probably the most important part about like the edge cases here. So we're going to be over here. We're going to try to fill in the first row. So we're going to add a 13 here. Then we're going to add a 14 over here. Now we filled in the first row. So what we're going to do is take the top pointer over here. And now it's going to be in the same position as the bottom pointer. So now over here, we're going to be trying to fill in the right column. We're going to go from the top pointer up until the bottom pointer. So we just fill in a single value here, 15. And at this point, we would do the same operation, take our right pointer and shift it to the left over here. And now we know we need to fill in the bottom row going from the right pointer up until the left pointer. So we fill in a 16 over here. And once we've done that, remember, once we fill in the bottom row, we take the bottom pointer and increment it by one. So now the bottom pointer is going to be up over here now. Now, normally at this point, we would fill in this row, the left column, and we would go from the bottom pointer up until the top pointer in reverse order. But you can see these pointers have already crossed each other. So our loop isn't going to do that. And once we've executed that portion of the code, which wouldn't do anything, we're going to take our left pointer over here, increment it by one to the point that it's going to be over here. And whenever the pointers cross each other, whether it's the bottom and top pointer or the right and left pointer, we are going to stop. So that is pretty much the entire algorithm. 
as you can tell, the time complexity is going to be big O of n squared because we're just traversing this n by n matrix. And I guess the memory complexity is the same if you count this as additional memory. If you don't count it as additional memory, the memory complexity is constant. So now let's code it up. First thing I'm going to do is just initialize a two dimensional matrix in Python. It's easy to do it. So this is going to be the row. It's initially going to have a zero and it's going to be of length n. So this is pretty much an array filled with n zeros. And how many of these rows do we want? We want n of them. So in Python, this is called list comprehension. We can say for underscore in the range of n. The reason I call it underscore is because it's not being used. And this is a two dimensional n by n matrix filled with zeros. Now we know we want to iterate over the matrix. But before we even get to that point, let's initialize our pointers because that's really the most important part of this problem. We have our left and right pointers. They're going to be equal to zero and n minus one respectively. And I'm going to copy and paste this because we know the top and bottom pointer are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and do that. And lastly, I'm going to initialize the value to be one because we do need to keep track of that as we uh, continue to increment it. And the condition I'm going to use here is continue while the left pointer has not crossed the right pointer. They can be equal because in the case that we have like a three by three matrix, we might get to a point where left and right pointers are equal. That's perfectly fine, but they should not cross each other. Now I could do the exact same thing with the top and bottom pointer. I could put top here and bottom here. It will work out the same. You just need to put one of those conditionals in here. Before I actually write any code in this while loop, I'm just going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill in every value in the top row. After I'm done with that, I'm going to fill every value in the right column. After I do that, I'm going to fill every value in the bottom row. And lastly, we know we're going to fill every value in the left column. And I guess it's worth clarifying that the bottom row and the left column should be filled in reverse order. So I guess I'll add that clarification, but I guess it's not super necessary. So now we know what we're trying to do. And after we're done with that, we're simply going to return the matrix. Now it's just a matter of writing a few for loops. Now filling in the top row is pretty easy because we're kind of used to iterating from left to right. So you could call this variable I, but I'm actually going to call it column because I think it makes it easier to keep track of what we're doing because we're iterating in the top row, but we're going from the leftmost column up until the rightmost column, including the rightmost column. So in Python, if we want to actually include this value in our for loop, we have to add that plus one because by default, it won't include this value. I personally don't like for loops in Python for that reason. I find that being more explicit, like in languages like JavaScript is a little bit better, but oh well. Here is the part that you might kind of get tripped up at. How are we going to fill in this matrix? Remember what your pointers are doing. We're filling in the top row. So tell me what pointer should we use to indicate which row that we're in? Well, of course, top. That tells us which row that we're in. Now, which column should we pass in? Well, that's exactly why I created this variable and I called it C to make it obvious for us. This is the column that we want to be at. And what value are we going to assign it to? Well, just our variable up above. And then after that, we should probably increment this. And after we have filled in the top row, we're going to fill in the other columns and rows. But don't forget to take your top pointer and increment it by one. Because now that we filled in the top row, we can shift this guy down. And at this point, the rest of the solution is going to be similar. So at this point, we're filling in the rightmost column. So we want to iterate through every row in the range from top to the bottom row. But I'm adding once again that plus one because we actually want to include the bottom row. So now I'm going to have matrix at this row and at this column, the rightmost column is going to be assigned to this value and value plus one. And after we fill in the rightmost column, we should probably take our right pointer and decrement it by one. This is starting to make sense, isn't it? 
Well, the next two are going to be a little bit more tricky, not conceptually, just because it's really easy to get an off by one error in Python. So what we want to do here is fill in the bottom row. So we want to go column by column in the bottom row. We want to go from the rightmost column, of course, up until the leftmost column, but we actually want to include the leftmost column. So here, instead of doing a plus one, though, we're actually going to do a minus one. And here I'm going to pass in a negative one because this tells Python that we want to iterate through starting from here up until this value in reverse order. And we add that minus one because we actually want to include the leftmost value. We minus one here because we're going in reverse order. Now to fill in the matrix, which row are we at? We're in the bottom row. Well, which column are we filling in? Well, that's why we have this variable C. And then we assign it to this value and value plus one. When you fill in the bottom row, you should take the bottom pointer and decrement it by one to shift it up. Now, lastly, the leftmost column, we're gonna go row by row starting at the bottom of the matrix all the way up until the top. I'm doing minus one because we wanna include this and then iterating in reverse order. And then the matrix at this row at the leftmost column is gonna be assigned to this value and we're gonna take the value and increment it by one. And then after that's said and done, we are going to take our left pointer and increment it because we just filled in the left column. After that is said and done, you can see this is quite a bit of code. None of it is really super complicated though, as long as you can kind of set up the problem properly. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's about as efficient as we can get. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Recently, I added a quiz feature that I'm actively working on to help you quickly review coding interview problems. So definitely check that out if you're interested.